<laughs> Again, Blue Coal Dealers present radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopkeepers, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, The Plot Murder. just a moment, the shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have something important to tell all you homeowners. During this treacherous winter season, you can protect your family's health by burning blue coal. For blue coal's harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. Blue coal saves you money, too, for it burns steadily, completely, down to a fine, powdery ash. So next time you're buying fuel... Ask for Blue Coal by name. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Order a trial ton from your nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow. An important announcement. Just before going on the air with today's adventure of The Shadow, we received a telegram from the American Police Review, presenting The Shadow with a special award. Be sure to hear this official presentation at the close of this program. And now... Blue Coal presents The Shadow in the Plot Murder. Captain Hines, read the findings of this court martial. We find the accused, Lieutenant John Wilson, guilty of treasonable sabotage against the government. No! In that he willfully destroyed a secret device known as the Flying Torpedo. Invented by one George Arcalis and acquired exclusively for use by the government. Has the prisoner anything to say before sentence is pronounced? Yes. Yes, but I... what can he say? He admits he broke the mechanism on the demonstration torpedo. Quiet, please, Professor Arcalis. As the inventor, we understand your concern in this matter. But please don't interrupt. Well, Lieutenant Wilson? I... I, I, I don't know, sir. I, I can hear all that's going on, but I... I went into the... It's obvious, General Levitt, that Lieutenant Wilson is not mentally accountable. He was sufficiently accountable to enter the testing shed by virtue of his authority as an army lieutenant and to tamper with the flying torpedo and render it useless the very day it was to be demonstrated to the government. Read the sentence of the court. Lieutenant Wilson, this court decides, subject to the approval of the president, that you will be dishonorably discharged from the service of your country and sentenced to imprisonment for the term no! of... No! The... No! Oh, God, he's got a revolver! Don't shoot! That's the man, Professor Arcanis! He's wounded, oh, Professor Arcanis! Call oh, the doctor, take us under Wilson back to his cell. And I tell you, John Wilson can't be guilty. He just can't. Well, why not, Margaret? After all, traitorous army officers are not unknown to history. Yes, but the peculiar way John Wilson talked on the stand makes me think there's something strange about the whole thing. He acted, well, almost like a man in a trance. Lamont, just what is this flying torpedo he's supposed to have tampered with? Well, that's what its name implies, a sort of aerial torpedo filled with high explosive flying under its own power. Once it's launched into the air, instead of flying a predetermined course, its direction can be guided by radio beams from an observation plane flying high above it. Oh, I see. Imagine its tremendous effectiveness in warfare, deadly accuracy, and hitting even a fast moving target like a, a troop train or a supply ship. Sounds tremendously important. Who invented it? This man, Archelaus, who was to have demonstrated last week at the proving grounds before a large delegation from the capital. Besides being members of the War Department, a great many high officials and other branches of government were to attend the test. Well? Since your friend Wilson gained access to the laboratory and put the flying torpedo out of commission, the test has been postponed until tomorrow. And who is our careless? Where did he come from? The famous foreign inventor. Had a reputation abroad. Lamont, you don't suppose it's possible our careless has the boy under some strong mental influence? It's possible. They've got Wilson temporarily in the city jail. Won't you call on him as the shadow? Margot, do you honestly think that this case warrants my attention as the shadow? Lamont... I don't ask many favors, but I have the feeling John Wilson is innocent. All right, Margot. You're really serious. The shadow will pay a call on John Wilson in the city jail. Lieutenant Wilson is 
in that last house, Professor Archelaus. Thank you, God. These parts that General Levitt gave me. Do you take it or do I keep it? And you better keep it, sir, in case you want to use it again. Yes, that's right. You'll uh, you'll have to talk to Wilson through the bars. Uh, no one's allowed in his cell. Thank you. I have no desire to go in. I already have one arm in a sling due to the young man's temper. There's only one or two questions I want to ask him, then I leave. Very well. Well, who is it? You! I can't... Don't get excited, Lieutenant Wilson. I only came to tell you that you're a much better mechanic than a marksman. Your bullet only injured my arm. I'm only sorry I didn't... didn't kill me. The only way you can break the spell I have over you, isn't it? To kill me. Will somebody chop? Look in my eyes. No, look. No, I won't. John Wilson, look in my eyes. No! Look in my eyes, Wilson. Uh. That's right. Uh. Now repeat after me. I destroyed the torpedo. I destroyed the torpedo. Say it. I... I destroyed the torpedo. Sabotage against my country. Sabotage against my country. I am guilty. I am guilty. Well, that is all you remember. <laughs> Are you sure that's all you remember, Professor Arcalin? Who said that? Guard. You are there? No, not the guard, Professor. He's waiting at the end of the passage. Uh, you hide somewhere. In the next cell, perhaps. No, I am here. In the shadows, Professor Arcalin. Perhaps you've heard of me. Who are you? possessing it invincible that the high command of both the army and navy are to be there to witness the test. The president, too? Yes. The president and the vice president expect to attend, together with the secretary of war and the secretary of the navy. Oh, they've fallen into my trap. They'll be blown off the face of the earth just as I planned. I'll be sure you make a final inspection before the torpedo is taken out of the grounds. 
and see that the steering mechanism is set. I understand. But since I am your chief assistant, they might ask me to go along with them. No, they won't have fixed that. Their bungling army mechanics think they understand the flying torpedo perfectly. So to satisfy their pride, I've let them take complete charge of the demonstration. Good. Don't worry, Barra. And afterwards? Afterwards, with the guiding brains of the nation wiped out at a single stroke, the country will be thrown into confusion, disorganized. So we'll have nothing to fear. I see. There are only two things that bother me slightly, though. Lieutenant Wilson, for one. Wilson? Did he really discover the secret trick of the steering mechanism? Yes, he knows what we intend to do and how we intend to do it. You should have disposed of him at once. I thought of that. I was afraid it would arouse suspicion. But I'm keeping Wilson under mental hypnotic control until it's too late for him to stop us. Wouldn't it be better if he were dead? Perhaps. I can still visit him at the prison. And what is the other thing that bothers you, Professor? Only a shadow bothers but I'm not quite sure of the extent of its power. A shadow? Don't worry. I think I can take care of it, too. Listen. What is it? I thought I heard footsteps outside in the hall. Go and look. There's no one here. Oh, it's empty. Uh, must be my nerves. I'll be glad when this is all over. Our escape is to come, Carol. Yes, the freighter will be waiting for us at South Pier. But go now, Carl. And success to you. Good night, Father. Good night, Father. Uh, well, the shadow. If I can't put my willpower against the shadow, then I deserve to lose. And I've never <laughs> Torpedo loaded and ready for the demonstration? Good. I'll expect a report. Sorry, I can't be with you. Good night. Now, Cranston, to get back to this Lieutenant Wilson, I don't see what I can do. But there may be some desperate plot at the bottom of this. Wilson acts as if he didn't 
put under some powerful hypnotic spell. He might know something about this flying torpedo that you ought to know. For oh, heaven's sake, Cranston, I haven't time to listen to any sort of drivel. I know you're a very agreeable young man, and you mean well, but you're letting your imagination run away with you. Now, if you don't mind, I must get ready to leave for the capital. Very well. Just do me one favor, General Levitt. I might prove something to you. Well, what is it? Suggest to Professor Archelaus that he be present with the other official visitors at the proving ground. The demonstration starts. Well, of course, Professor Archelaus will be there. Why shouldn't he be? That's what I'd like to know. Unless I'm very much mistaken, General, Professor Archelaus has made arrangements to be far, far away from the scene of his triumph. Uh, George Cranston, I believe you know something. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, well? There are two gentlemen here to see you, sir. Professor Archelaus and another man. Oh, all right, show them in. General Levitt will see you, sir. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you, General Levitt. That's all right. This is Mr. Cranston, Professor Archelaus and Mr. Barlow. How do you do? How do you do? If you don't mind, Mr. Cranston, I'd like to speak to General Levitt alone. Not at all. I'm uh, sure you have weighty matters to discuss. Good day, gentlemen. Thanks, Good day. Cranston. Goodbye. Oh, orderly. Yes, General Levitt. Is my luggage ready? Yes, sir. Fine. Then take the next train. Uh, there's one leaving in 20 minutes. Can you make it? Yes, sir. If I go now, sir. Go ahead, then. I'll close the office. I'll meet you in the capital tomorrow. Yes. Well, what brings you here, Professor? Yes, oh, uh, sit down, Mr. Barlow. Thank you, sir. Barlow here has just returned from the proving ground, General. He supervised the loading of the torpedo early this morning. Everything was all right, I hope? Perfect. Your army mechanics seem very proud they're going to handle the torpedo by themselves. Of course, we'll be anxious to know how it comes out. Oh, aren't you going to be at the demonstration, Professor O'Kelly? I'm afraid not, sir. Another engagement, unfortunately, prevents my attending. Oh, yes, I see. But I can't understand how anything could be more important to you than seeing your own invention demonstrated before the highest officials of our government. I admit I'm terribly disappointed, General. However, I've left instructions for a telephone message to be sent to me at my hotel the minute the demonstration is over. Mm. Professor, I'm not sure that this test should be made without your being there. What do you mean? Suppose I order you to go. But no, that's impossible. Why impossible, Mr. Barlow? You must excuse Barlow, General Levitt. He is a little excited. Excited? What about? Look here, Professor Arcalis. Why don't you want to go to the proving ground? Must I repeat my previous statement? This stalling and hedging is very suspicious. All right, George, you'll go whether you want to or not. Don't touch that phone. Turn up the kettle. You can't give me orders in my own office. Huh? You hit him too hard, Barlow. His head was bleeding. He struck the desk when he fell. Yeah, drag him in his closet and huh. the door. He knows something, Professor. Yeah, he fool or suspects something, but how? And we've got to act quickly. I wonder if Lieutenant Wilson has talked like you said. He's still under your hypnotic spell. Perhaps it would be better if Lieutenant Wilson died. Yes. You're going to murder him? No, I merely suggest that he kill himself. Oh, Barlow, if you'll tie up the general... Professor! Look at him. What? General Levitt is dead. Well, here's General Levitt's office, Margot. No one seems to be here, Lamont. Oh, that's odd. The general was here less than an hour ago. General! General Levitt. Look, here on the corner of the desk. Blood. The word to Commissioner Weston at once. Tell him something has happened to General Levitt. Yes, anything else? Yes, tell him to send a squad of men to South Pier. I overheard Professor Archelaus and Barlow talking about meeting on a freighter there. Where are you going? I'm going to the jail. I'm going to make one more desperate attempt to get John Wilson to talk. You've got to find out what this is all about before it's too late. <laughs> Here at the jail, Professor Achilles? No, go down to South Pier, Barlow. I want to be alone with Lieutenant Wilson. Yes. I'll follow after I've taken care of him. All right. At first, I'll collect the baggage. But you remember only this, Lieutenant Wilson. See always my eyes in front of you. Yes. You will forever do what I tell you to. Stop! Leave me alone. No, never. Look, Wilson. See what I have. A knife. Here. Take it. Now listen to me. You are disgraced. Your family disgraced. You have nothing more to live for. Say it. I have nothing more to live for. I... I have... Nothing more to live for. Then draw the knife across. 
cross your wrists. It's easy. Tonight. Stop, John. Don't do it. Shut up. He's trying to make me... Keep away from me, Wilson. I've got you Get by the arm, me, Wilson. Did you feel the knife yourself? Yes, you cut me, you fool. Your blood is being shed, Professor. Remember what I told you? Let me out of here. Let me out. He's gone, John. Something, something's happened to me. I, I feel like I can talk now. Then talk. Tell me what you know. Okay, this is spell as weak as I, I can't see you. And I don't know who you are, but you've got to help me. I first suspected Archelaus and his crowd when, when I saw that the steering mechanism of the flying torpedo had an extra attachment. An extra attachment? Yes, you see, the flying torpedo is supposed to be steered by radio beams from an accompanying plane. But this extra attachment I'm talking about would, would render the radio beams ineffective. In other words, the rudder is set so the torpedo will fly in a complete circle and come back and strike the point from which it was sent, like a boomerang. If it does that in the demonstrations of day, it will wipe out all the important government officials. Yes, that's their plan. Just as I made the discovery, our killers came in, into the workshop. I accused him, and he put me under this spell. I, I tried to talk, but I couldn't. Never mind that. I'll get in touch with Commissioner Weston, have him go to the proving grounds. He can stop the test flight of this flying torpedo if he gets there soon enough. Yeah, having us wait around here at the South Pier. There don't seem to be anything stirring. Who are the guys we're supposed to pick up? Uh, two boys by the name of Professor Archelus and Barloff. Uh, foreigners, huh? Yeah. What are they going to do, make a getaway? I don't know. Commissioner Weston just said to make sure we got them, that's all. Uh, if it had been that important, don't you think the commissioner would have come down here himself? Well, he was coming, but he got a last-minute call to go over the place where they're trying out that new flying torpedo. Oh, yeah, I read about that. All these inventions. Now, wait a minute. I'll be coming down the dock. Mm-hmm. Hey, you! Hey, stop where you are and shoot! Ah, uh, what's this all about? Nothing. Where are you going? That is my business. What's your name? Come on, what's your name? Are you Barloff? What is it to you? Answer me, are you Barloff? Yes. Well, that's all we wanted to know. Uh, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. Well, take him. Uh, I have done nothing. Come on, he's got a gun, Sergeant. What? I'm sorry, Sergeant. I had to do it. That's okay. This Archelaus will probably be along in a minute. This boy behind those says we don't want our killer. Yeah, hey, look out. Here comes another guy down the dock. Right, quick. Right behind this piling here. Come on. It must be our killer. Yeah, I guess. Professor Rod Kalis? Who are you? The police. They want to ask you what. Well, you can't get me to talk. You'll never make look me. Out, look out, look out, Sergeant. He's got a gun there. Not that girl. Not can't take me. The police can't touch me. You asked for it. Oh, you nailed him, Sergeant. You get through? Oh, I'm okay. Uh, here comes the parole. Must have heard those shots. Oh, they didn't have time. Oh, Commissioner Weston? Yes, Sergeant. So you got our man? Yep. Is he dead? I don't think so, sir. Well, Archelaus, maybe you'll talk. I'll never talk. <laughs> Commissioner Weston. Shadow, what are you doing here? We can't waste time, Commissioner. Did you stop the test of the flying torpedo? Yes, but... It... Good. Commissioner, you've saved the lives of thousands of spectators. Nothing of some of our highest government officials. Then it was you. Yes. Yes, I had a friend of mine call you. And now, Professor Archelaus, another story. You haven't much time. I know. I'm dying, Shadow. It was a plot against our national defense, wasn't it? It was. Who employed you to do it? That I won't tell you. But Lieutenant Wilson is innocent. Yes. Wilson is innocent. Commissioner, you're a witness. Lieutenant Wilson is cleared. Yes, Shadow. And what about General Levitt? Barloff killed him. Where is Barloff? We got him behind these boxes. How? How did you know about General Levitt, Shadow? We found blood on his desk. But this time the blood is yours, Archelaus. Yes. Mine. Well, Shadow, Archelaus is dead. Yes, Commissioner. And you've been instrumental in averting a national calamity. Archelaus is dead. The innocence of Lieutenant Wilson has been proved. And the integrity of the men who protect our liberty is again vindicated. And now, 
Now, here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with helpful heating hints for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. I've received numerous letters from homeowners asking what they can do to prevent chimney loss, wasted heat that goes up the chimney instead of through the pipes of your heating system. It's really a simple matter to prevent this, and you will save money on your fuel bills, too. The next time you refuel the fire, move the handle of the turn damper, that plate-like damper inside the smoke pipe, one-sixteenth of an inch toward the closed upright position. Then if the fire still burns too freely, close the turn damper another sixteenth of an inch. Repeat this operation until you've found the correct adjustment. Once you've found this ideal adjustment of the turn damper, Mark the position on the smoke pipe with a piece of chalk or something that can be plainly seen. Then leave the damper set at that mark. Remember, the nearer the turn damper is set to a closed position, the smaller the chimney loss and the greater the volume of useful heat. If you follow the suggestions that I give you every Sunday on this program, they should enable you to heat your home with the utmost efficiency and economy. However... If you're experiencing trouble with your heating plant, call your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay trained serviceman to your home to inspect your furnace. This service is free to all blue coal customers. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And here's the official telegram advising of the award the American Police Review has made to the Shadow Program. Quote, The American Police Review salutes the producers and sponsors of the Shadow for their contribution to the cause of better law enforcement. 13,000 police executives throughout the United States read the review. So our purpose is to help them find the best tools and methods to combat crime. The editors of the review have turned a critical ear toward the shadow program for some time and are gratified to note that your presentation of police roles truly reflects the intelligence and character of the high type of police officer now found throughout the land. We therefore take pleasure in presenting to you the American Police Review Certificate of Award for Distinguished Service to the Cause of Better Law Enforcement. Signed, J. Norval Birch, editor of the American Police Review, Chicago, Illinois. (laughs) And so, on behalf of Blue Coal Dealers and of all those who assist in the weekly programs of The Shadow, we tender our thanks and appreciation to editor J. Norval Birch and the American Police Review for their splendid testimonial. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Solid fuel for solid comfort. This is the Mutual Broadcasting...